historic NFL Prime Time. Jimmy welcomes the boys over to his new house, but will old friend Dan Marino be there to greet them? John Elway leads his Broncos against the familiar foe with first place on the line. The first place Redskins looking to knock off the first place Colts. While the Jags go after the Bengals, Houston sent Steve Young home early. Speaking of home field advantage, did someone say Lambeau Field? Some teams had trouble getting a handle on things. The Falcons still having problems in Atlanta. Scott Mitchell had no problems finding White Church. Not yet, Ricky. I'll tell you when we're ready. The Pack weren't ready for this. Ready or not, primetime meets you head on. Nerd. again, everybody. I'm Chris Berman. Welcome to a historic edition of NFL Prime Time. And this is our 10th year during this program. The fifth highlight will be the 2000th lifetime highlight. We didn't make this up. It's true. 2000th highlight in the history of NFL Prime Time. And to help us dole out a little history, did I say dole? The to <laughs> Thomas Jackson and the judge, Bill Pito. First, let's get you caught up on the late games around the NFL. The Denver Broncos making a major statement. They are all over the Chiefs with 10 minutes to go at Mile High Stadium, 34-7. to Shannon Sharp, a pair of touchdown catches. Dallas uh, all over Miami. A big game for Troy Aikman and Michael Irvin. Aikman with three TD passes. Cowboys win the Battle of the Jays, 29-10. to Seattle has four field goals from Todd Peterson. Under eight minutes to go now, they're looking to beat uh, the Chargers for the first time in six meetings, 26-13 to in the fourth. And the New York Jets look like they're going to get off the schneid, although it is the Jets. Just over two minutes ago, they have a 10-point lead at Arizona, 31-21. to Reggie Cobb, a short touchdown run with five minutes to go to give them a little bit of the margin. The Pittsburgh Steelers had it rolling until they lost last week to the Houston Oilers. The Atlanta Falcons gave everything they had before succumbing at Dallas. So you figure that with Bill Cowher's jaw firmly out there, Shula-esque, that this would be no problem for the Steelers over the Atlanta Falcons. That's why they play the games. And here they go from Atlanta. Hey, the Braves couldn't win. Maybe the Falcons could step up. June Jones saying, let's try something different. Two runners in the backfield. And why not Bobby Hebert and Jamal Anderson? And we love the way he plays. Look at this, Thomas. Boom, through the Steelers. And it's a 27-yard pickup down to the five. Couple plays later, Hebert to Robbie. So back, 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 back. Blind man eligible. Touchdown. Seven of the fouls. Yeah, and what makes this play is Tobek does a good job of selling the block on the end and then sliding out into the flat. A Bear delivers for the touchdown. And then a good job by the Falcons for most of the day of putting pressure on Tom Zach. There, Cornelius Bennett comes free for one of four sacks that they had on the day. Third quarter, the Steelers down 10 to three. Mike Tomzak to Andre Hastings. It's the Battle of Hastings. 12 yard touchdown. We're tied at 10. Tomzak, 22 of 27 for 214. He was on it again. Later in the third, his 100 yard rushing streak snapped last week. But Jerome Price does what he does best. Yeah, that's right, go north, south. Here we go, and boom. 24 yards, a good block by Tim Lester, number 34. That's Gladys Bettis, not Gladys Knight, the Pips, but Gladys Bettis' his mom. Then from the one in, touchdown, Steelers lead 17 to 10, 90 yards in the second half alone for the big fella. Fourth quarter, though, the Falcons, gritty. They played well these last few weeks, despite the fact they had nothing to show for it. Bobby Hebert to Burt Emanuel. 42 yards, sets up a four-yard TD from Hebert to Emanuel, and ties it at 17. Just over three minutes ago in a tie game, Bettis. Uncorks a 15-yard run. Norm Johnson warming up. Will he be the hero? Then Tomzak. Hastings. Left flat. Makes the comeback catch down to the 21. Bills get inside the five. Three seconds to go. Good. Norm Johnson, it's good. Bill Cowher, it's good. Atlanta Falcons, it's bad. Another loss for the game. Falcons put the Steelers back on the winning track. Uh, they have to mark the 6-2. The Steelers win a 20-17 between 126 yards rushing before Jerome Bettis, who gets back in that category. We showed you the Tom Zach's numbers. And you know what, Tom? First of all, when you're winless, it's very hard to go to work and say, well, we're going nowhere. We're a playoff team last year. Give the Falcons the nod. I That's mean, right. A couple weeks ago, they came from behind, almost beat Detroit last week. They almost beat Dallas. They almost beat the Steelers. They're close. But in the end, Pittsburgh... 
getting the win. The teams that know how to win are winning in these and, situations. And I think too much of a typical Pittsburgh game plan. They feed you a large dose of Jerome Bettis. Again, he went over 100 yards rushing. Mike Tomsack supported by a solid, hard-hitting defense. But I think when you talk about Mike Tomsack, and I was one of the ones who said at the beginning of the year we knew his history. He would play three good games in a row. He'd play a bad one. He hasn't done that. He's been as accurate as I've seen him all year or all his career. 22 of 27 today, and I think you give credit not only to Tom Sack, but for Cower for making a quick decision. Early on this year, we have to remember, this team lost their first football game to the Jaguars. Mm -hmm. He made the switch from Miller to Tom Sack. They now are one of the best teams in the league. He wanted veteran leadership at the quarterback post at that time. That's right. And he's continuing to get better veteran <laughs> leadership at the quarterback post. So the Steelers are up to 6-2. and two. When we return, I need to show you what NFL crap time, including... Well, the Bay of Pigs doesn't get much better than that. Fittingly, it's our historic highlight. 49ers, Oilers. Eddie George and the Oilers try to beat the Niners in a hard-hitting affair. I can't believe I'm losing my hair back here. Like father, like son. Is brought to you by 1-800-COLLECT. The way to save on collect calls. Well, Trick or Treat Monday night. Mike and the Gang Prime Monday at 7.30 Eastern Time. Get you set for the Bears and the Vikings. And then on ABC's Monday Night Football from the Metrodome. An NFC Norris Division rivalry. Bears, Vikes, Monday Night Football. And then our Sunday Night Football begins next Sunday night. Jerry Rice going for career catch number 1,000 against the Saints. They changed coaches midseason in 1970. J.D. Roberts, the first head coach. Tom Dempsey kicks a 63-yard field goal. What will they do for Rick Venturi against the Niners? You'll have to tune in with Mike and Joe and the gang and Mark when we return. Plenty to come in prime time. The Giants had a surprise for the Lions. And first game for Bruce Coslett. Would that be a different result for the Bengalis? Welcome back to NFL Primetime. The judge, Bill Pito, with us now. And a change from David Shula to uh, Bruce Coslett, uh, a longtime uh, offensive coordinator, both in the Weiss years and the Shula era. Would the Bengals change their stripes? Please. Well, they ha please, they have to do something. New Bengals coach Bruce Coslett wants to bring the jungle back to Cincinnati, but it's Coslett who finds himself in a jungle. Coslett won't have long to turn the one in six Bengals around. The team needs wins now to generate financial support for a new stadium. Can Coslett make a difference? Well, safety Bo Orlando says if there is any change, it will be on Sunday. The Bengals at home to play Jacksonville. And Bengals fans want that jungle back. Coslett focus. Second quarter, no score. Jags spread the field. Mark Brunel. The leading NFL quarterback in terms of passing yardage coming in, running. Touchdown, he had 45 yards rushing on the day, 7-0 Jags. Tommy, how about the Jags pressure? Yeah, good job of pressuring Jeff Blake. You take a look at Clyde Simmons on the bottom outside of your screen right there. Runs a little twist with the end. Maintains some pursuit toward the quarterback and brings Jeff Blake down for a Jags record, tying a record of five sacks. But here's Blake to Carl Pickens. Hung in there. Touchdown. Tied at seven. Tommy, a pick situation. Well, Pickens does a good job of getting inside, but you watch Tony McVee flash right there and rub off the defender so Pickens can work his way back inside to get a touchdown. Third quarter now. The Jags are driving. Brunel back to pass. The Natron means. Means runs right through Rod Jones at the goal line. He's in there, 14-7, Jacksonville. Costlett and the Bengals, though, answer in the fourth. It's Blake again to Pickens again. Pickens, six catches, 51 yards, two touchdowns, tied at 14. Blake, pretty good afternoon, 19-30, 244 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Minutes later, the Bengals driving. Dijana Carter, he didn't start, but eight carries, 27 yards, and that touchdown, Bengals up 21-14. Less than two minutes to go. After a Jags touchdown, they're down 28-21. The onside kick, Dave Thomas and Dana Hall both collide. Thomas and Hall, it looked terrible. Thomas left the field on a stretcher, broke his left femur. Hall left the field, a sprained lower back. The Bengals got the ball after the onside kick, and they go on to win by the score of 28-21. Thankfully, Hall, just a sprained lower back, it looked a lot worse. Brunel was picked off twice, and both interceptions led to Cincinnati touchdowns. Brunel had just 215 yards passing. Jags have now lost nine straight on the road. Cincinnati's Blake left the game with a sore abdomen, but it's not considered serious. So Cosley Chris gets his first win in his first game, and that's something he felt he had to do to get this team turned around, at least to have any chance of making a run here as the season progresses. The defense has played better than they expected this year, Billy. It's the offense that struggled, and, and maybe that's where they, uh, where they start to make their move. Well, the Detroit Lions at home always make a move. They had won 10 in a row, and into town limped the New York football giants. Ranked number 27 in rushing defense, going up against Barry Sanders, 
who hadn't had a 100 yard day rushing in his last five games. So obviously, a Lions blowout, but Tom, a recurring theme. That's why they play the games. <laughs> Here we go from the Silverdome. And Dave Brown with the Giants down 7 2. They blocked a punt for a safety. Dave Brown to Chris Callaway, 36 yards. Ryan McNeil brings him down. Then, watch Dan Reeves. Oh, that tricky Dan Reeves. Tyrone Quigley. He's going to throw it. And it's down to Hattie, 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 Hattie. Chris Callaway, there's the score. There they go. The Giants up 8 7. As Callaway, 3 for 77 in the first half. Giants defense so takes over. It was a day for the defense for the G-Men. Scott Mitchell picked off by you. Whoop! Up, where is it? It's a fumble. Corey Whitmer, then Jason Seahorn. Maurice Douglas picks it off, and look at him go. He's been 11 years in the NFL. It's his first TD. Giants lead 18-7. Tito Wooten blocked a punt earlier, picks off Scott Mitchell. That leads to a touchdown. The Giants. After playing some superior defense, lead at 25-7 in the second quarter. Even Barry Sanders couldn't get going against this D. Chris, when your passing game is as ineffective as that as the Lions were today, Barry Sanders would suffer the consequences. Here he takes a screen pass, Jesse Armstead right on top of him. Then Sanders with a handoff. You see him trying to find room up the middle of the field. None there. And then after a gain of three, watch right here as the Giants converge on the outside. You look at his stats. On the first half, wow. six carries, eight yards. Meanwhile, Wayne Fon says we need something from our quarterback. Makes a decision. The Magic Man, Don Mikowski in. Scott Mitchell, been picked off three times out. He's irate. The Magic Man, in the third quarter, directing traffic, bobbing, weaving, getting picked off. Almost intercepted. Mitchell stews. Hey, this was a blowout, folks. And the New York Giants, who had only five interceptions in their first seven games, had five today. They block a punt for a safety. They recover a fumble. Their job against uh, Barry Sanders is unbelievable as uh, they hold him to 47 yards. And the Giants win it 35 to 7. And for the Giants, Tom? attitude they stay with it and they even pulled a couple tricks out of the bag with Wheatley and, and I think it's a direct reflection of their head coach Dan Reeves who, who is a guy who does the most with the least sometimes and I think today when you look at the uh, position he was put in Keith Hamilton his best run stopper out of the lineup but they managed to shut down Barry Sanders and then I think you see a maturing process going on with Dave Brown early on in the year it looked totally inept but as the season has gone on you see him getting more and more comfortable and I think you see Dan Reeves giving him the thing that he does best and putting those things in the game plan. Now, let's call it here. We love Wayne. Wayne yeah, Fonts well. is one of Primetime's favorites. But here it comes. It's the first Rasputin game because they were 4-2 and two, and now they're even at 4-4. Four and four. They go at Green Bay and then they go at San Diego which may be a desperate team at that point on a Monday night. Scott Mitchell was picked off three times. Uh, Magic was picked off two times. Both were ineffective. <laughs> They're in a situation where the watch not is good. now beginning. Well, they had better not start losing games at home. Right. We know how they are on the road. That, they don't need to happen, but it did. And now, they're in a little bit of trouble. Colts and Redskins, two first-place teams. Panthers, Eagles, two very good teams. Panthers started the day in first. Who would win it? Primetime, again, if you tune in late, it's just our 10th year. Not just our 10th it is our 10th year. And uh, coming up in a moment, our 2,000th lifetime highlight. Wow. Number one nine 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 fits a uh, pits a fair a pair of five and two teams. Say that three times fast. <laughs> the Panthers and the Philadelphia Eagles, and with Ray Rhodes and Dom Capers as head coach, going up against two young quarterbacks and Ty Detmer and Kerry Collins. You knew that they would throw everything at the young guys. Not only did they throw the kitchen sink, they threw in the dishwasher and the garbage disposal. Here we go at the bet. As uh, Kerry Collins, fourth and inches, first quarter. Anthony Johnson stacked up by the Philly defense. Tom, so they hold. Yeah, great blitz from the outside. Ray Farmer, you see him slant down the line. Nice tackle on Anthony Johnson. Eagles first and 10 now after taking over. Ty Detmer off his huge game with Irving Fryer. Continues to look at the pretty pass to Fryer. 42 yards down to the five. Next play, Ricky Waters is uh, tight. What, what is the play? Tight. Oh, okay. Get out of here. You know what? I, uh, and Detmer showing some poise. Calls a timeout. So second to goal from the three. Here's the play, Ricky. Ricky running Waters. Touchdown, 85-yard drive, 7 of the Eagles. Second quarter, same score. The ball on the nine. And Detmer to the rookie tight end. Jason, well done. 
five play, 85 yard drive, 14 nothing Philly. Yeah, Denver showed a lot of poise with pressure on his backside. You see Lamar Latham coming from the backside, nails him, and we've seen some mighty feisty quarterbacks this year. Detmer says, get up off of me. Latham starts a little something, and you see Detmer right there saying, Brooks, we got a touchdown. Just let it go. Third quarter, more Philadelphia defense. Uh, Troy Vincent with the hit on Anthony Johnson. Mike Mamola, it's a fumble. He falls on it. Sets up a Gary Anderson field goal, 17 to three. After that, fourth quarter, it's Detmer and Fryer again. This one for the history books. 36 yards, same play as before. Congratulations to Irving Fryer for the 15th of six. 100 lifetime catches. Detmer, 23 of 38 for 342. That set up a field goal. It's out 20 to 9. Fourth quarter. Kerry Collins has a chance to get his team back in the game. Run! Just the five. He was the it's a football. Vincent knocks the ball loose. Brian Dawkins recovers on a big change of events. Yeah, and you see Kerry Collins right there not really protecting that football, and that's a critical situation for his ball club. He'll learn as he matures. Well, the Eagles celebrate. They play the good D and uh they win it by the count of 20 to 9. Uh, in that game, uh, even the Waters was held to just 33 yards. It was Detmer that had a huge, huge outing. And Philadelphia, inside the red zone, had to three times in there, got 17 points. Carolina inside the red zone, four times in there for only six points. And that's the difference in the ball game. And Tommy, first of all, let's go with Ty Detmer, who we, we uh, showed on the NFL Countdown. Had a nice story with him. Hey, he's 3 0, showing a lot of poise, a lot oh. of poise. And, and hats off to Ty Detmer, because when I talked with Carolina this week, what they wanted to do was stop Ricky Waters, put him in a position where they had to throw the football, and then pressure Ty Detmer. They managed to stop Ricky Waters and got some pressure on Ty Detmer. He responded with being very poised, and I think played beyond the number of games that he has in his history. Now, you have an interesting dilemma if you are the Carolina Panthers. You're on the road, you're playing a very tough football team. You see that Kerry Collins is not playing well. And I think that every other portion of this football team, as they did today, plays pretty well. I think you have to, at some point, think about putting Steve Berline in, getting a little bit of that maturity we talk about, and, and, and allowing him to give you a chance to win a game like this. Your defense is going to yep. keep you in games. That's what makes it an interesting dilemma. Well, you know, their goals have changed. You see, they can get into the playoffs here. But it's not a benching for good. I'd like to see right. them use Berline like Don Strzok. Like they used to play Woodley for two and a half, three quarters. If right. that didn't work, Strzok, you're in the fourth quarter. Woodley, you start next week. No. Not no. for us to tell Don yeah, Peters and Bill Pullen what to do. <laughs> but you, just a thought for some people who care. When we return on the NFL Crab Time. Marshall, well, all sorts of stuff. Brett Favre, Antonio Freeman, not what the Packers needed. Moose in the Battle of JJ. Stay with us. Good evening once again, everybody. I'm Chris Berman. Welcome to ESPN's debut of NFL Primetime, and we hope this becomes a habit. 20 yards for the touchdown. The Patriots have the lead. Lepet says, you know what? I am not a crook. It's a fumble. Anthony Smith rumbling, bumbling, stumbling to Rick here. And the senator goes 20. I say he goes 25 yards for a touchdown. Kelly throws an intercept. What? What? Steve, I got you, babe, Bono. I got you, babe. Off to number 30 and what oh, at that little nugget run. What Nelly? Let me tell you about Tim Jackson. Chris had a 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 oh. Vinny to Michael Jackson. <laughs> Into the end zone. Miami's defense. Marco Coleman. Marco Coleman. John Carney, 43 yards out for the win. It is good. Good night, everybody. To break Ironhead Hayward. Watch this. And boom. And boom. And watch this. And boom. And boom. And Norton Jr. Hits her right to the face and a left of the jaw. Just like his daddy would have done. Moon across the middle of Ernest Gibbons from Louisville. Now, watch what happens. Brett Favre throws it, and then it's Ram Tan. Ram Tan. Look at Dion make the interception and start up the field. And Chris, he gets loose and what? He could go. He could go all the way. Psych. No, not this time. <laughs> Tom Jackson, Pete Axton, and for Gail Gardner and John Saunders, our entire crew on primetime, I'm Chris Berman. Thanks for watching. See you next week. <laughs> we 
haven't changed at all, have we? We looked exactly the same. Yeah, right. <laughs> that was uh, that end there was September 13th, 1987, the first time NFL primetime ever hit the air. That was the first year that we had the NFL here at ESPN. That first highlight with Nixon in there was uh, <laughs> the Patriots beat Miami 28-21 in the rain behind Steve Grogan in the LaPet interception. And now here we are on the standing on the precipice yeah. of our 2000th highlight. Have we been here that long? Have we been there that long? And then great to see Pete in that, uh, yes. in that highlight yes. package. Yes, we've had some fun, Pete and John Saunders and Gail Gardner and the judge and everyone who's been along for the ride behind the scenes has helped us. And now, speaking of Pete, for the 2000th yes. highlight, is there <laughs> any more fitting highlight that we could give and dole out fun than the Bay of Pigs? <laughs> it's Tampa Bay at Green Bay at Lambeau Field where the tundra has not even begun to get frosty. Brett Favre to Antonio Freeman, but he's crushed by Donnie Abraham and Melvin Johnson. And he suffers a broken forearm, gone four to six weeks. He had just moved into the important wide receiver slot occupied by Robert Brooks. But Edgar Allan Poe Bennett goes for 12 yards and he gets blocking here, Tom. Yeah, and they found something to the left side of this offense. There you see him. Edgar Bennett again being led down the field for a seven-yard gain. And that'll, uh, when they move over, it'll be Dorsey Levens for a touchdown. And the Packers lead it 10-0. Remember, oh, it's a double dip. They're all in the crowd there as Levens and William Henderson go up. Meanwhile, Packer defense Reggie White. Yeah, Reggie White, a great job rushing the punter here. Tommy Barnhart, he fakes the fake punt, <laughs> then tries to punt the ball. Reggie White does a great job of the block. And Green Bay somewhere underneath there getting the recovery. Then second quarter. Well, here we go. Here's Trent Dilfer and what? Nothing there. Yeah, what well, White working on Riesenberg, and then watch this pass rush right here. Not a lot of technique to it. Oh. Just kind of pushes Riesenberg over right to Trent Dilfer. Who needs technique when you get brute strength? Here we go, and Eric Rett, after seemingly a layoff of about 12 years, <laughs> is back with the Bucks down 10-0. No. Eric Rett, Rett, run to Terra, Rett. Frankly, my dear, well, you know the way that goes. 12 carries, 29 yards for Rett in his season debut. And so the Buccaneers move in for a chip shot field goal, but Michael Coma, who sta, who stead, no, no Ablo. And now these are the Buccaneers. Watch this, fourth and nine. Trent Dilfer. It's a fumble. It's a stumble. It's a fumble. He, it's a flip. It's a tip. It's a pick. Oh my goodness! The entire franchise history boiled into that one play. But here they come. Trent Dilfer to Rob Thomas. It's a first down. Hey, remember the Bucs are in this game, down 13-0. The then Dilfer to Dave Moore. I said Dave Moore for a touchdown, and the Bucs are within six, 13-7. Just over a minute to go, fourth and six. Dilfer, fourth down, you at least throw it up there at that point. Leroy Butler, Brian Williams has had a big season to the job. Brett Barb with no touchdown pass, first time in 18 games. That includes the playoffs. And the Packers do win. I mean, they're not thrilled with this because uh, the Buccaneers played some good defense. The Packers went up with a count of 13 to 7 as they up their mark to 7 and 1. And as is the case, it seems all the time, there's one blowout between the Packers and the Bucks, which was in week mm -hmm. one, and there's one close game, and that's what we had today. Yeah, and I think what, what we really have here is two teams that have different agendas. Uh, in Tampa Bay, you have Tony Dungy looking for improvement in this squad. Now, certainly disappointment in the way Trent Dilfer played today, the two INTs in particular standing out, but he gets Eric Rett back in this lineup, and I think he saw some promise for his running game, and that defense is playing pretty steady football. They managed to stay in a game with the Green Bay Packers during the course of the day. Now for Green Bay, you're talking about a ball club that's looking to get to the Super Bowl, and I think already every team that comes in, especially in Lambeau Field, they come in there and play them like they already have a championship. It, it, in Lambeau Field, they do. Well, Tommy, 2,000 highlights now in the book? Yeah. I think it's time to go inside the numbers. As we go inside the numbers, here it is. The, once again, the Bucks. The Bay of Pigs, our 2,000th highlight. Why do we show this? Well, in that one, you didn't have it. You could go all the way, but we're guessing here. About 1,182 of those in our 2,000 highlights. <laughs> Rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. We've had about 874. <laughs> From Louisville, 257, your number. From Brown University, Steve Jordan's number, 83. Buccaneers winning highlights over this time, <laughs> only 47. They won a Nitro game. We didn't do that, so they've actually won 48. That is the actual number we thought you needed to know. Inside the Numbers is brought to you by Visa, the preferred card of the NFL. It's everywhere you want to be. 
All right, on to our next 2000, no problem. By Steve Young, an early and scary exit from this game. Colts and Skins, two Eastern leaders. Terry Allen leading the way. This is... All right, 49ers, Oilers. Wait a minute. I think I know what this is. My goodness, you're kidding. We trotted this out? If we've had 2,000 highlights, here comes the 2,001st, a primetime odyssey. It's the Oilers hosting the 49ers, and there you go. That's an odyssey. Marquez Pope, hell up to the face. Steve Young down, and then Michael Barrow was all over. This is the third play, though, just drills it. Just drill Steve Young. Yeah, perfectly legal hit. Great acceleration by Barrow and helmet to helmet. Right there, put Young down. Steve to the bench, diagnosed. He had a CAT scan, head and neck, transiently unconscious. However, probable next week. Unbelievable more, and this is a moment with Elvis Gerback not in the building. Jeff Brom. Jeff Brom's lullaby. The uh, second year man from Louisville gets drilled, but goes all the way down to the one yard line. And then Brom to Terry Kirby. He wants to throw it, but Ted Thompson is covered. And then Tom, look at this play. Yeah, Michael Barrow, not only a great hitter, very versatile, plays well in the passing game. Good job right there on, on tight end Thompson. It's a 3 0 lead, and Chris Chandler, the middle screen to Ronnie Harmony, such a good pass receiver. And look at him go. It's a big move for 20 yards. That sets up from 56 yards, Al Del Greco. He doesn't do this on the golf course with a slice. <laughs> he hits it right down the pipe, and so is the field goal. Six to three, Boilers. Yeah, and Oilers secondary, a great job today on Jerry Rice. You see that right there, Chris Dishman would not bite on the short move, and then look at the entire secondary and a linebacker converge right there to keep a game very short for Rice. The Oilers are up 9-3 in the fourth quarter, fourth and three. Dishman there, bats the ball away, and the Oilers figure they're in good shape. What? Here we go again. It's Brom. Nine minutes to go. The swing pass to Terry Kirby. And look at Derek Deese. Make a big block. That's right, Derek Deese. And then Kirby, 49 yards. At this point, William Floyd, who's fought so hard to come back, he was sitting. Kirby was playing third and seven from the 20 with four and a half to go. Terrell Owens on the out pattern. Go on. Beat Terrell Owens. Brom to Owens. The most unlikely of combinations as the Niners up 10-9. Then... Steve Air McNair's pass deflected by Junior Bryant, picked up by Chris Dolman. In a hard hitting affair that Jeff Fisher could certainly appreciate. It's the 49ers winning by the count of 10 9 in a game that Jeff Brom and Steve McNair finished. We told you the situation with Steve Young. It's amazing that he's listed as probable at all, but he was released from the hospital and uh, discharged from Methodist Hospital, suffered the concussion. As we told you, Chris Chandler left the game, re-injured his groin, questionable for next week. That's why McNair ended that. So, in one of the hardest hitting games we've seen in a long while, it was 10-9, the 49ers, Colts and Redskins. Battle of two first-place teams in the East. Marshall Falk playing Tom. Already 3 nothing skits. And this is their drive. Look at Mark Logan, the former 49ers, barrel down for 28 yards to the Colt 21. Three plays later, inside the five, where are you going to go? You're going to go to Terry Allen. Yeah, they've done it all year. It's the 11th touchdown of the season. 10-0, the Redskins. Hell to the... And look at the extra, extra point, Scott Galbraith into Richard Dent, and boom! Dent says, don't do that! Oh. Oh. And Richard is ejected from the game. See, Marshall Falk got the start down 10-0. And he looked pretty good on a couple of runs. Draw play from Harbaugh. Cuts the seam down to the inside the five-yard line. This time, the play fake is to Falk. Harbaugh rolls around and finds Cliff Gross. But unfortunately, Tom, he was totally gross. Yeah, you take a look at the replay. Gross just doesn't squeeze this ball right there. Tries to pull it into his pad. That's why you have to reach out with your hands and softly catch the football. So Lindy had to settle for the field goal down 10-3 in the second. Next position, look at Gus Farad. What? to Henry Eller, 30 yards, down to the Colt 42. Eller with three receptions is now tied with Hall of Famer Charlie Joyner for fifth on the all-time list, 750. What a big year Eller is having, and what a reliable target he's been for Gus Farad. Here's Leslie Shepard. Boy, Farad throwing with authority, Tom. Seven yards, 73 skins. This time, Falk gets the ball in the red zone. Marshall is in, it's the Marshall plan. The Colts have caught it to 17-13 at the half. Late in the third quarter, Brian Mitchell. Here's where the game separated. Looking to make the move outside. Looking to have a little convoy. And even though a couple of Colts chase him all the way down inside the 20, he turns. Go all the way. Oh, 
you're not going to call him down on the one, are you? Ray McElroy called him down at the one. Setting up a Terry Allen touchdown, though, 24 to 13. The skins, this time, hit by Ken Harvey as Harbaugh hits it. Oh, there is it. Daryl Morrison picks it up as the Colts are standing around the Colts. Though it was an incomplete pass. Yeah, but you take another look here. The arm does not start forward before Ken Harvey gets to him. Actually, it was Harvey's momentum that knocked that ball forward. So a good call there. The skins get it. Terry Allen breaks free at the 20. He could go in for his third touchdown of the day. 31 to 16. That's it. Six touchdowns the last two days for Allen. 13 on the year and hail to the Redskins. They lost their first game. They said they've won seven in a row as uh, they beat the Colts 31 to 16. As uh, Tommy, let's start with that game. Norv Turner's first two year nine wins. This year, seven wins already. We aren't even at Halloween. Yeah, and I think a simple formula. We heard Joe Theismann this morning talk about the new hogs. They do the blocking. Terry Allen does the running. It takes the pressure off for Rott. And I think that the one thing you look for in a good football team is solid special teams play, and the Washington Redskins get it. One of the hardest sitting of veteran San Francisco fans who remember a Monday nighter at Chicago in, uh, in 88 that they lost to the Bears 10-9, a 14-6 Monday night game in 86 that they lost to the Redskins 14-6. But for San Francisco to get out of there with Brom and Owens as your combination with Steve Young, a question mark, speaks of their defense when Norton, by the way, had 11 tackles uh, for the 49ers, as did Timmy McDonald. We have plenty to come. And I think a game that... Number 57 is mildly interested in the Broncos and the Chiefs at mile high. And Cowboys and Dolphins. Oh, yes, the Battle of Jays went its definite way. Well, we have a fun with this one all weekend. St. Louis at Baltimore. Who's playing? And it was so hard to figure out that they went overtime. Yeah, who would have thunk it? That's right. why I'm Game of the it. day. And I got it. Yeah, it's your <laughs> Last week <laughs> against Jacksonville, the Rams were totally outplayed, but 117-14. Wide receiver Isaac Bruce put the win in a perspective, said Bruce. It was ugly, but some people marry ugly women and have a beautiful marriage. He did say that. As for Baltimore, they've had so many injuries to defensive linemen. They've had to change from a 4-3 to a 3-4. And last week, they gave up 45 points and 548 yards against Denver. The game of the day. Art Modell looking on. Third quarter Rams up 13-6. Vinny Testa intercepted by Todd Light. Each team had four turnovers. 25 yards for Light on the return. 26 Rams. Fourth quarter now. Ravens down 23-17. Testaverde hits Derek Alexander. 13 yards and a touchdown. Ravens go up 24-23. Fourth quarter, under seven minutes left. Bam Morris bams his way in there. He had two touchdowns in the game. Ravens up 31-23. Rams, oh, they come back. 4-38 left. And Tony Banks, who had a big day, hits Isaac Bruce. He had the great quote, also had 11 catches for 229 yards. Rams in business. Three plays later, Hale Green, the veteran, runs it in there for the touchdown. Rams down 31-29. Rich Brooks says, you know what? We got to go for two. And on the two, it's Green, who runs it in. So we're tied at 31 all. Tommy, what do you have? Are well, you going to see Tony Banks here suffer the fate of most young quarterbacks here? He takes the snap in the shotgun, looks down the football field, starts to scramble out, tackled by Jarrell Williams right there, coughs up the football, and it's recovered by the Ravens' Deron Jenkins. Banks has now lost eight fumbles this season. Three seconds to go, 31 all. Matt Stover for the win, 32 yards out. It is up, and it is no good. Would this game ever end? We asked that once. It's overtime. 7.44 or 7.54 left in the OT. Banks hits Harold Green over the middle. Tackled inside the 20. Jim Low Miller hit. Well, he's getting focused. But watch, hap watch what happens here. Will it end? Will it end? 33-yard field goal up. Snap. Butchered by Jimmy Martin. And the game continues. Would this thing ever end? Brooks says, I don't know. March Broda, well, how about uh, Testaverde here, Tommy? Testaverde settled down right here. Looks down the field, goes to Michael Jackson. Hee <laughs> hee! For a 42-yard game. And then something a little bit shorter to Brian Kenshin. On this next play, you see Testaverde right back there, short over the middle, throwing the ball down to the 34-yard line. Two plays later, final seconds of overtime. Testaverde to Michael Jackson, <laughs> the biggest <laughs> of the day, as it wins the ball game with 10 seconds to go in overtime. Finally, the game ends, and the Ravens win it, 37-31. This game almost becomes the first tie game in the NFL since 1989. Ironically enough, it was the Browns who tied Kansas City.
Banks, 26 of 40, 353 yards. Testaverde, 31 of 51 for 429 yards, three touchdowns. Vinny's got 15 touchdown passes in his last five games. Next stop, Jets in the cards. Rich Kotite, well, already nervous. Opening play, second quarter. Jets up three zip. Flea flicker, Frank Wright. Reich, a wide open, Keyshawn Johnson. Tommy, some analysis. Well, Billy, exactly what the flea flicker is designed to do. You see Aeneas William come off the coverage right there. He's looking for safety help. The safety is also built bit on the flea flicker. The result is an easy touchdown to Keyshawn Johnson. Who had a big first half and then a foot fracas. Adrian Morrell and Seth Joyner. Joyner doesn't like what's going on here, and he retaliated. He ended up getting tossed. Cards down 17-0 of the half. Third quarter, here come the cards. Flea flicker again, this time for the Cardinals. Graham to the former Jet, Rob Moore. Down to the Jets, three, sets up a touchdown. Card down 17-7. Jets next possession, first down from their own 20. Adrian Morrell fumbles a football. Arizona recovers, and Rich Kotite says, oh, what do we have? Boomer Esiason, of course, now the backup with Arizona, former Jet quarterback. Three plays later, Graham hits Larry Centers, two yards and a touchdown. Cards now down 17-14. Fourth quarter, it's 24-14 Jets after a touchdown. After the touchdown, the ensuing kickoff. Rookie Leland McElroy. Look at him go. Down the sideline. And the Cardinals in business. It would set up a touchdown. Cards down 24-21. Coach Tight says, oh boy. Later in the fourth, first and ten from the Jet 20, Adrian Morrell. Yo, Adrian! 31 carries. A team record 199 yards. Sets up a first and goal. Wright gives to Reggie Cobb. Rodin, Rodin, touchdown. Jets up 31-21. Rich Kotite wins a football game. The Kites is over. The Yanks have won the World Series. The Jets have won a game. Joe Namath, he's excited. And the Jets win it. 31-21. They snap a 12-game losing streak. Keyshawn Johnson, seven catches, 94 yards. How about Rob Moore, the former Jet? Seven catches, 143 yards, one touchdown, but not enough. Disastrous loss here, Chris, for the Cardinals. They had a chance to go to 4-4. Four and four. They had been 3-1 and one with Kent Graham as a starting quarterback, and the run ends with a loss against the Jets. It can't be the Jets. J-E-T-S-J. -E Jets, Giants, Yankees in a 24-hour span. Start spreading the news. <laughs> All right, well, didn't have to spread this news when the schedule came out early in the year and said Dallas at Miami on October 27th. You just circled it. The Battle of Jays. Would Johnson, well, let me do this right now, would Johnson give Jerry Jones the jimmies, or would it be vice versa? I will say one thing right now. How about them Cowboys? <laughs> well, those are the happy days. A pair of Super Bowls for Jimmy and Jerry, and Sunday they shake hands opposite sides of the field. Dan Marino back. We're in the protective uh, shoe. Barry Switzer, he's won a Super Bowl. Okay, let's play the game. The talk is over. Troy Aikman, pump fake to Michael Irvin. I tell you what, he's back. 36-yard completion all the way down to Miami, 35, Tom. Yeah, and you look at corner Calvin Jackson and how much room he's given Michael Irvin right there to run that out pattern. And that's the kind of coverage all day that the Cowboys saw and took advantage of. 6-0 Cowboys early second quarter. Marino to Charles Jordan. That's a pretty slant. It's 31 yards. One play later. We told you on countdown. Look for the fullback, Stanley Pritchett, out of the backfield. Marino lifts and threw it. Touchdown. That Dolphins lead it 7-6. How about them Dolphins? Dolphins doing some hitting in this game. Terrell Buckley, he had the five picks, lays out Kelvin Martin on a punt. O.J. McDuffie unloads on Billy Davis. Even Emmett Smith twisted and tangled up in uh, aqua. His knee a little sore, but Emmett back after a few plays. Meanwhile, Marino gets it going. Looking deep. Fires. Leading ahead of the defense, 46 yards. Yeah, Deion Sanders left the game. Alundis Bryce in at the corner, and Randall Hill evidently waiting on it and blows right by him. Doesn't think about stopping. 46 yards later, makes that diving catch. Sets up a field goal, 10-9 at the half, but all the Cowboys in the third quarter and the fourth quarter. First drive, Aikman, Deion, out pattern 11 yards. 
Then, third and goal from the four. Aikman, Eric Bjornsson. Touchdown. We don't have Novacek. We got our touchdown. Hey, how about your Cowboy? They're up 16 to 10. Then, third and 17. Next Cowboy position. Michael Irvin. Where's the defense? 61 yards down to the three-yard line. My goodness. He went, they were guarding him in Jacksonville. Two plays later, Aikman, Irvin. Two-yard touchdown, 22 to 10. Irvin. Hey, Jimmy knows this. 12 catches, 186 yards. My word, he's back. Dolphins try to rally. Swing pass to Blaney Pomeley. But Dion makes this strip. And it's a fumble. No, this way. No, this way. No, this way. No. Woo! But it's the Cowboys ball. Marino feels the frustration. Fourth quarter. Third and seven. Aikman. Moosh. 15 yards to Daryl Johnson. Foot at the 12 yard line. Then, second and goal. Aikman. Let's see, we've gone to the tight end. We go to Michael Irvin. What about Emmett Smith? Oh, yeah, him. Number 22. Hit, but not stopped at the one. Touchdown. Three touchdowns in the second half for the Cowboys. And Barry Switzer, Jimmy Johnson, that's going to get out of here. And so, a convincing win by the Dallas Cowboys as they beat the Dolphins by the count of 29 to 10, outgaining the Dolphins in this game by the count of 482 to 221. So that's what they outgained them by here in the ball game, 27 to 10 first downs as uh, Aikman with the three touchdown passes, 33 of 41 for 363. We've got more to come, but when we do, we got highlights to show you and game balls. Terry Allen, another three touchdowns for him, plus late AFC West highlights. Stay with us. Already Schottenheimer. Well, he's won the last two at Mile High, but before that, a horrible place for him to play, Tom. And motion is always designed to confuse the defense. Here you're going to see Terrell Davis come up, line up right beside Shannon Sharp. Then you get the motion from the outside, Ed McCaffrey. The confusion on the defense causes the miss of the coverage, and Shannon Sharp gets deep behind the defensive backfield for a nice touchdown throw from Elway. Tommy, weren't there questions about wouldn't Elway not throwing well? What a perfect throw to Shannon Sharp. Tamarick Vanover down 10-0. And look at him go. He can do this. He's a game breaker. He could go all the way. 97 yards, and the Chiefs have cut it to 10-7. to Later in the first, we told you Elway on the money. Watch this. What? To Anthony Miller across the middle, 32 yards of the Chiefs, 23-yard line. And this time, Sharp in motion to the left. Yeah, again, the subtlety, Shannon Sharp right there, lining up on the left side, coming in motion, just swings to the outside, and another beautiful pass from Elway right in the front corner of the end zone. 17 to 7, the Broncos. Then a minute to go, second quarter. Second and 21. Big pressure by the Chiefs' front wall. Elway takes off and picks up the first down, a 22-yard run, and timeout. Timeout, right there. Two plays later, Elway. The floater to Mike Sherrard. Oh, what a catch and throw. 24 to 7 Broncos at the half. 208 yards in the half for Elway. And Tommy, what happened with the Chiefs? They lose a little poise. Yeah, you watch Dale Carter here on a play going away. Takes a shot at Lionel Washington's knee. A cheap shot that the Broncos will remember for future, not only future games, future years. Taunting the Broncos on the sideline. Coach Marty Schottenheimer trying to stop it. It's something the Broncos will remember. Well, Elway is still on fire. Third quarter to Anthony Miller. What? Between defenders. Oh, my goodness. They riddled the Chiefs. Down to the 15. Three plays later. Aaron Craver. Up, up, up. Not quite as high as Pike's Peak, but up and into the end zone. 31 to 7. B-man. As the Broncos slice and dice and make no mistake, they have a two-game lead in the AFC West. 34 to 7, Elway on it. Sharp six for 99. All the cylinders clicking, Tom. Yeah, all cylinders clicking, and certainly after that cheap shot by Dale Carter, we saw the Broncos defense pick things up in the form of some hard hits on the Chiefs. So the Broncos win it 34 to 7. When we come back, game balls and hey. Bolts, Seahawks in the Pacific Northwest, who would swim upstream? Just up from 40 Deuce and Green. Prime Time is brought to you by the Visa Check Card. It works just like a check, only better. Well, I'll be trick-or-treating, and the Chargers going out with a lot of their key players against the Seattle Seahawks. 
Robert Blackman and the Seahawks have not had many takeaways this year, but Steak was playing. Not Stan Humphreys. They made a mistake. Sean Salisbury picked off by Blackman, and uh, Cortez helped made it happen. Yeah, great play by Cortez Kennedy, tossing aside Joe Cacuzzo, and then leaping over Greg Engel right there to put the hit on Salisbury as he's throwing the football. Yeah, without Courtney Hall and Junior Seau and and uh, Stan Humphreys, the deck was stacked, and Chris Warren's been quiet all year, gets a couple of blocks, gone, could go all the way, but he doesn't. Galloway made the block on Kevin Ross, it's a 50-yard pickup. Yeah, Joey Galloway peeling back to make that block on Kevin Ross right there, something that receivers like. Two plays later, John Freeze gives to Lamar Smith, rubbish. In from the 10, and the Seahawks lead at 13 to six. They've lost five in a row to the Lightning Bolts, nine of their last 10. Down 13-6, Salisbury into traffic. Darrell Williams picks it off. Look at him go up to the midfield strike. He could go all the way. Change those inside the number graphics. We've had a couple of more, and he's out of it. He's gone. He's on his way to Tacoma. 20-6, Seahawks. Seahawks, two picks in the first half. Third quarter, 23-6, Seattle. Salisbury, Brian still. He's downfield, but even when they make a good play, they still make a mistake. Hits it by Ben. Carlton Gray picks it up and watch this. I think I'm gonna get myself a convoy. Boom, there's a block right there. Knock his own man down. Carlton, shades of Gray finally pulled down, setting up a fourth field goal by Todd Peterson. Salisbury threw for 291 yards, but he's picked up four times by the Seahawks. 146 yards for Chris Warren as Seattle beats the Chargers 32-13. And now the Bolts have fallen to 500. Primetime Players is brought to you by 1-800-COLLECT, the way we call Collect today. My game ball goes to the Redskins' Terry Allen. Three more touchdowns in Washington's win over the Colts. Allen's got six TDs, Tommy, in the last two weeks. Yeah, my game ball, Billy, to Mike Tomsack, and you'll not see a quarterback play much better than this. 22 of 27, 214, a TD, a marvelous season thus far for Mike Tomsack. My game ball to the entire defensive unit of the New York Giants and all those interceptions. Look at that big fellow, Ray Agnew, a member of the silent majority. Makes the play, gone. Five picks, they get a safety, and they roll the Lions. Well, you saw a little history tonight. That was a lot of fun. 2,000 highlights and counting. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoy all of us, not only those of us on the air, but our whole staff here at NFL Primetime. We're bringing the highlights and the fun and the merriment and the enjoyment of the NFL to all of you at home. We start our Sunday games next week. We can't wait. For Tom Jackson and Bill Pito, I'm Chris Berman. See you. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.